Welcome everyone, here is how you use the Magic Keyboard Folio case. So first of all, in order to get things started, I'm going to remove the case uh, from my iPad 10th generation. So we have this side right here, this is the back protector. This is magnetically connected, so there's no setup needed. You simply place the uh, connector on the side of the iPad 10th generation. Make sure that the camera outline matches where the camera is located. Now once you've done that, you can see we have a connection. In order to access the stand, you're going to notice there are two layers here. So don't pull up from the bottom layer, okay, because that is housing the case and that won't do anything, right? So, so there are still some times where I accidentally do this, you can see nothing's going to happen, right? Instead, the second layer on the outside, just use your thumb, just push up and then you can, of course, adjust the angles. I was a little bit surprised the angles aren't as, you know, you know, extreme as you'd think, it's only 45 degrees, but uh, that's just something to keep in mind. Now, for the actual keyboard itself, you have these triple dots on the keyboard, okay? See those triple dots? And there are also triple dots on the bottom of the iPad. So just make sure you see the triple dots first because you may be looking at the wrong orientation. And once you've verified that your iPad is facing down, the triple dots are down, you just want to place your iPad centered you know where the connectors are and they should magnetically connect and once you've done that there's no setup needed okay you just click around and you're instantly <clears throat> ready to go to navigate before i talk about the keyboard the trackpad gestures uh, on top of this you can uh, in order to remove it just get one finger on the top left get your thumb on the top left of the ipad and just push up in this direction okay this way, push up, and you can see the keyboard case will be removed. Now, if you flip the keyboard case around like this, and then you connect the iPad, you can now, you can see right here, have the keyboard out of the way if you would like it. Uh, do keep in mind that the stand on some angles may slightly get in the way of the keyboard, but you see I'm going around here. You can see I can uh, type on the touchscreen keyboard because it recognizes you've connected it in the opposite way. And uh, that's a, a solution you can take. If you can't just, you know, move the keyboard away, you still need to connect it. On top of this, if you close the stand, you can now see the keyboard isn't on the back, so it's not getting in your way, number one. And number two, the iPad is nice and flat. So let's say it's time to take some notes. You can take notes, uh, you know, the uh, the magic, you know, the keyboard itself isn't like on the table, isn't in the way. It's below the iPad. Uh, it's nice and flush. And of course, at any time, you just put one finger near the top of the keyboard, and it just pull up diagonally, and then the magnets will attach. And then let's place this back on. Okay, so I'm gonna take out the stands and uh, let's do some gestures, etc. So with the trackpad itself, you, know, you just move your finger and this cursor will move around. When you get close to an app icon or just some uh, object which you can click, you can see right here, the cursor goes in the icon itself and it gets kind of trapped, okay? So it does take a little bit of pushing to get out. Once it's highlighted, and not everything will highlight, but once you are on top of something, if you just click and release with one finger, you can see the um, the application will open, or you know you just do a left click, it will interact with the operating system, right? Because if I go to general here, you can see it's not gonna magnify right, so it's only in certain areas, but you do a click, and essentially it acts like a tap on the device. Now in order to scroll, you do a two finger scroll, so two fingers, swipe up, Swipe down like this, okay. And do keep in mind that when you swipe down, the device is gonna swipe up, right? And then when you swipe up, the device is going to swipe down. If I go to the general area of settings, and then I go to the trackpad, uh, do keep in mind that there is no option for 
switching that, okay, so you can't reverse it, so when you're sliding down, screen slides down right. So just keep that one in mind. However, you can change the tracking speed, so that just changes how fast the cursor moves, okay. Natural scrolling, just... You see here where it says natural scrolling, uh, that is what is reversing the input, so when I swipe up it goes down. If you want, when you swipe up the trackpad, the swiping to go up, turn off natural tra uh, scrolling, and when you swipe up, you can see it is now reversed. On top of this, we can change the tracking speed. So, more the rabbit shows, the more fast you can see the cursor moves around, and then closer to the turtle, the slower it moves around. On top of this, we have to click, okay, do a proper click release. If you just want to tap and release for clicks, then you turn this guy on and you can tap. So I'm going to tap and release and it will register the tap, okay. On top of this, you can do a click release as well and that is also registered. Two finger secondary click. So if I do a two finger click like this, you can see it will add extra options for the applications, okay. So it's essentially, you know, your right click if you're on like a Windows or a Mac. Um, so I'm going to turn off tap to click. I personally don't like that. I like to do a proper click. And if I just do a two finger click, you can see if an error supports it, you're going to have more options ready to go. But for the most part, that only applies to applications on your home screen. There are some other elements which support it, but most of them do not. Now you may notice I've been seamlessly closing out all the apps, right? I go in here and I magically close. That's with the three finger swipe. So you get three fingers here and you're just gonna flick up and release, click up release. And you can see it takes me to the home page, okay? Click up release, click up release. But we also have the option for the multitasking view. So in order to access multitasking, you're gonna slide up and hold so before we flick up and release with three fingers, right? We're gonna flick up, but we're gonna hold, right? So flick up, hold, and then release, just like this. And it's a motion, you'll get used to it, okay? So flick up, hold, release. <laughs> and the operating system gave up there. That's a bug in the OS. <laughs> so flick up, hold, uh, release. So let's try that one more time. It's a little bit buggy, but you can see for the most part it works, right? And once you're in the multitasking, if you want to close out of an app, use two fingers and you just do a flick up, boom. And it's actually bugged out, the trackpad has bugged out. So you can see it's, uh, yeah, you can see when I'm swiping to the right, it's not working properly. So this is a bug in iPadOS, if you do get this issue, uh, all you need to do is restart the device. <laughs> now, in order to close out of applications, usually what you do is you get two fingers and you flick up, okay? However, right now, the magic keyboard is bugged. So swiping up and down, it's actually moving left and right. So this bug is something that happened with iPadOS 16. Hopefully when you're watching, this will be patched. So right now, I could either swipe to the right to swipe up, because again, it's glitched, or you can turn off the iPad, turn it back on, and then when you do a two finger swipe up, it will actually close out the application correctly. Okay, so just keep in mind, if things aren't working as they should, I mean, there you go, you can see the device is very bugged right now. Um, oh my, <laughs> the iPad has crashed. The iPad has actually crashed. So I'm gonna restart this device yeah, iPad OS is a little bit buggy, uh, and, and I will continue with the tutorial.
All right, so I'm back on the. I go back to the home screen, you can see, yep, I'm swiping to the left and it's actually swiping down. So if you do have this bug show up, because uh, I did have this on my iPad Pro, but only in the beta, uh, you see where the power button is and the volume down key, okay? So you see the volume down key and the power key. Just press and hold these two together. Keep them held down until you see the slide power off. And then you're gonna slide the power off like this. And then once it's off, you just press and hold the power button for about 10 seconds. You should see the Apple logo and then you just wait until the device starts up again. And now you can see, I was not lying earlier, two finger, swipe up and flick, and now it's working properly. On top of this, if I do go to the home screen here and I slide down with two fingers, this will bring up the search bar right here where you can do your search request for an app or you know a Safari search, etc. Uh, if you ever want to access the control center, you bring your cursor to the top right and once it magnetizes to the Wi-Fi and the percentage or battery, you just do a click and you can see we have the control center and you long press, you, know, you can go to the sub menus here. If you get your cursor and you just keep on swiping upwards, you can see the notification center will show up. If you wanna you know, do a home button press, you can either do the three finger swipe up like this. That's the first thing you can do. You can also press and hold commands and then click and release H. Let's try that again, show this menu here. Like that, you can see it goes home. You do need to do it quickly, otherwise that menu shows up and it's a little bit annoying. Uh, you can also click on the white bar here. So you see my cursor goes to the white bar. I click it and it goes home. And you can also keep on sliding down with the trackpad and that will also go home. If I open up an application in question, such as you know Firefox, it doesn't matter what app, you can notice the dock is hidden in order to access the dock, you slide down and keep on sliding down. You may need to do multiple flick downs, okay, or slide downs until you see the dock here. And of course you can do the split screen, but uh, to join split screen if you want, you search up how to split screen on iPad 10 and you'll find my video, uh, which will discuss that. Uh, on top of this, keep on sliding. You can see you go to the multitasking in that case. And if you just click on, the bar. It's meant to go home. Uh, you can tell this iPad shouldn't have released yet because this is kind of embarrassing how many crashes I've had today. Hopefully when you're you know playing around you don't have as many crashes. This is not like this is a glitch I'm doing. This is part of the operating system. Uh, on top of this if you long press the command key you can see all of the commands you have available right and you can slide across so if you ever want to play around with those, so you can see the system, just like this, and then the multitasking options, right? So command key is obviously the commands, multitasking is those buttons. You see multitasking is the globe key and up, and then globe key and the arrow, this goes to the previous app. But I never find myself using this. You can see previous app and the next app. The reason why I don't use this is because there is another gesture you can use. So you get your three fingers on the trackpad and you just want to flick to the left to go to the previous app and then, sorry, to the right for the previous app and then to the left for the next app, okay? You go to the left, there is no next app. Go to the right, you can go to the previous app just like this, okay? So you wanna do that. You can do that just like so. And depending on the app you open up, there are so many apps to cover, but if you just long press on the commands, it will give you all of the options for the commands you can use, okay? So that icon there is the command icon, that icon there is the shift icon if you're wondering. 
and that's the minus, right? And these are actual like keyboard inputs, like Shift Command uh, O. And of course, it doesn't matter which one you hold down first, you just need all held down at the same time. Okay. And um, there you go, you're using your magic keyboard. Some things you may be curious about, there is no track, uh, trackpad, there is no brightness slider for the magic keyboard because there is no backlight available uh, on this model. Uh, unfortunately, you can't get like the regular magic keyboard for the iPad Pro with the backlight, so just keep that one in mind, that's a little bit annoying. And of course, you do have the function keys. These are just self-explanatory. The escape key is a semi-back button. It works sometimes. If I go to like here, I click, I click escape, it doesn't go back. But let's say you're in a full screen video. So I can mean the videos aren't working. Oh, iPad OS. But if you want like a video, for example, you can click escape to exit that player. And with that being said, if you want to help support the channel, you want to buy some iPad temperature and accessories or anything from Amazon, if you use my Amazon affiliate link in the description, I'll get a commission, which Amazon usually takes. So you'll help support me out and uh, Amazon earn less. Bye-bye.